Once again, this is the moment of truth. Because this is the time I have to do it right. First, I want to say, glory be to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Everything. I love my God so much. Sometimes I feel like I want to cry. But what can I say? I just want to take time out to say a few words about my father. Great man. For those of who have known my father can understand what I'm saying. And if you know much about me, can you imagine? My father was better than I am. So, you know, the, the maths is easy. Trust me, maths is very, very easy. From I was born, I see myself as a special young man. And I have good reason to affect that way. And I give you an idea of what happened. When I was born, my father was 42 years old. <clears throat> At that time, he had four kids prior to my birth. So at 42, you probably would think, oh, man, man want to hang up his boots. So there, there I came along. But here, the good part about it now, or the most fascinating part, at 42, he died at 53. And between 42 and 53, he had five girls. So you understand what I'm saying? When he produced this little boy, he knew that there was no more little boy to come. So I got just about everything. And I see myself as a special boy from there. I also had the pleasure of being the last relative or child or relative to my father to have seen him alive. I was the last. I was like 11 years old going on to 12. And he was ill in the hospital. And I can remember just like yesterday. It was a Sunday. I went to see him. At that time, I was living in the country. Me in St. Elizabeth, it's where I was born. But I was accustomed to coming to Kingston. And when I went to the hospital, he was not in his bed. So I sat on a chair and I saw him coming. And the way he looked, I started crying. And he walked up to me and he sat down and he asked me, why am I crying? Because I said to him that I fear that he's going to die. And he put his hand on my shoulder and he said, son, don't worry yourself. Remember to pray, give thanks, and do good. Once you do that, nothing can go wrong with you in life ever again. And from that day onwards, I remembered clearly what my father said. And I started to sow the seed of good. And right through the years, I can remember my life was at a point where, wow, I was saying, what am I going to do? And I start praying. And one thing I asked the Lord for, which he has blessed me with, See, all these beautiful people in this audience, I ask them to bless me with people. Because once I have people in my life, everything that I want, I'll get. I don't have to have money. I don't need money when I have good friends. Because my friends represent everything to me. Every single thing to me. Right? And I've practiced that over the years. I've been good to my friends. My friends have been good to me. Just want to be for a little. I want to say to all my sisters, most of my sisters, it's not all are sitting here. My cousins over there. Favorite cousin, big cousin, Sister Gloria, otherwise known as Miss Warren, the whole works. Shirley, mm, it's your job. My big sis, my big brother, where is he? Martin, there he is. It's my eldest brother. I love you all. I mean, you have taken time out, travel all the way from North Carolina to be here. Aleph, all the way from New York. Earl, Fortis, all the way from New York. 
I really appreciate you guys taking time out to come out to celebrate this, you know, grand occasion with me. I must say my eldest son, Julian, and his wife, Janine, all the way from Boston, you know, took time out to come and celebrate, you know, tonight with me. I love you guys. I really appreciate everything. And just want to say thanks to Denise out of Miami, Harvey, who was thrown down to make all of this possible. Um, Colette, my coordinator, who has done this wonderful work, as you guys can see. All my friends, as I look around, there are so many special people inside here. For me to start naming out all these people, it will take a very, very long time for me to do it. But I just want to say, there are a couple of friends in this audience that are dear to me. They are so dear to me. I love them passionately, male and female. You, you might try to understand how do I feel so much about a man, but you would not understand what these people has brought to my life. What they have brought to my life, I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. Now, throughout my life, as I have said, I've asked the Lord for people, and the Lord has blessed me with some wonderful people. None so much more than Victoria. I can remember when I met her. Earl had the story incorrectly. Yeah, Earl then had a true story now. In my heydays, I was a gambler, a professional gambler. I, when I sit at the table, I'll tell you how much money I need to win. And if I ever reach to it, God go with you. <laughs> and I can't get back. So, and I keep counting my money. I used to intimidate players. If I want 50,000, if I reach 45 as a gentleman, if I win this next game, I'm gonna know me done. I say if I'm gonna win back five grand out of the 40, 45, my done same way. <laughs> and I used to have these guys. Anyway, we were sitting at the table and Victor, three other girls, so two other girls came in. And a friend of mine around the table said, Victoria, I have a guy for you, you know. I knew then that I was the man. <laughs> but I didn't know. Because back in those days, I was the top of the pops. <laughs> I was the top of the pops. So any girls, I would be the first to get a run. And, you know, I just acknowledge to my friend, you know, everything is in order. And one evening I was sitting on the veranda. There's a house we used to gather. And I saw her coming from work. She was passing. And I shouted her. I said, what's up? And I said, come here. And she said, want us our walkers. <laughs> and I shouted and said, okay then, we'll meet me halfway. And the rest of it is those three beautiful <laughs> It has now gone 24 years and going and counting. So there's a story that says behind every successful man, there is a strong woman. But I just want to correct that. It's not true. I can tell any man, you don't need a strong woman. A strong woman will push you over. That will boot you off the curve, as the American would say. What you need is a woman who is committed, someone who can see your vision, someone who's going to work with you. And I'll show you why. When I was a gambler, race horse was my first love. When I go to the race horse shop, Victoria can tell what the day is like for me by the look on my face when I come in. So she will, I'll come in and I'll look good and she will say, oh, I see her, then I'll show up today. Yes. Now, you're talking about, I'll go, I'll go out like 50 grand in my pocket and I'll lose that 50,000 or I'll lose 100,000. And when I come home, now listen to me now, I'll lose a 50 grand. And you come home now, my year lady, know that you lose the money. And she'll say, oh, I see her, then I'll show up today. I'm going to say, yeah, man, you know what she said to me? 
Now worry yourself, man. Come I mean, next week, you're going to lick them down. Come next week, I call her from early. And I say, I knock them over. And I'm home now. I'm my way home. So just to show you, I've always been supported by her over the years. Whatever my visions are, I'm always supported. She never said I can't do it because she knows I believe that everything in life is possible. It's possible. Everything in life already exists. It's just for you to reach out and touch it. It is this close to you. You just have to do good to harness everything that you want in life. It's not something that is going to manufacture, going to create. It is out there. Do good, and good will follow you. It's simple. It's a simple, simple equation. And I've done that over the years, and I really thank her for the support over the years. She has been dear to me. You know, my kids have been great. I've seen them grow up. And, you know, I'm extremely happy. Extremely, extremely happy. And like I said, my friends, there are a couple of friends I have inside here. I may not call everyone name, but they have impacted so much on my life. Denise, I've known her for many years. She's my big sister. 